Okay, we're back. Now we're back into our 140 wiring practical projects. We're going to work to uh, project three. We're going to do shielded cable repair. The first one is utilizing aircraft solder sleeves and proper tooling repair multi conductor shielded cable. Well, we, what we have is uh, this here it looks like a single stranded cable, single strand. It actually has a shield on it, and it's used a lot on the, the new Boeing 787. Very thin. When you work with this stuff, you got to be very careful when you strip the outer coating that you don't nick through the shielding and then nick into the inner conductor. I'm going to take my strippers. There's two different types of strippers you can use. I'm using these uh, these strippers. I have another set, the black handle. There it is. You set. You can use uh, these strippers to strip the outside. These are, you are used a lot on, these are Cat 5, uh, used a lot on uh, shielded cable to strip. You simply set your depth by uh, adjusting the thumb screw. And then the spring-loaded pressure lays up against the wire itself. I'm going to stick this in. I'm going to lay up against the wire and strip the depth that I'm looking for. I'm going to strip it back some. And the spring pressure is going to lightly strip through the outer conductor. And you can feel it. And I'm going to bend it back and forth to see if I got through. And I didn't have it quite deep enough. I'm going to go right back to that same spot. Strip. Open it up. And there it is. Now I'm through. And I'm going to work it off. Yanks off the outer insulation. I'm going to inspect to make sure I didn't cut through the shield, and I look okay. I'm now going to take the shield, and it will come back. And I don't want all this shielding. I need to trim it back to the depth that I, I want to roll over the top of the cable. So I typically take it. Uh, oh, can I have that? Uh, scale. I'm going to take my scale. I'm going to lay it up. And I'm looking for a half inch. And I'm right there, about a half inch. When I flare it out, after I cut it, it'll be a half inch. I flare it out and I simply go around the flared part that I just made. And I just trim it. Just cut that flared off piece off. Just give it a cut. Once you go all the way around, it should slide off the extra piece. I'm going to take it and roll it over the top of my cable. Now that it's rolled over the top, those extra little pieces, I need to cut it off so it's not, um, you don't have strand, loose strands everywhere. Just give it a haircut. All right. Comb it back out. There we go. Look all right. And because I want my solder splice, when I repair this wire, I want my solder splice to shrink and the solder to be on the outside of the cable. I don't want the solder to sit on top of the conductor, the center conductor. Bad news. One end's wider than the other. The, the, other, the wider end will go in first to slide over the, the uh, to slide over the top of my uh, shield. So right now that looks like the right size. That is a, they're all rated at for different sizes. That's a 103. I'm gonna go down a step to a 102. And a 102 looks too small, but I just wanna show you what it would look like. And woo, that is too tight. That's gonna be too tight for what we're looking for. So we're gonna stick with our 103. I'm gonna set it to the side here. And I gotta prepare to, I'm gonna solder two wires together. The second wire will be this other side. What I'm going to have to do is I'm doing an emergency repair on this cable. I'm going to cut this off. And I want to do the same thing on this end. I'm going to pretend the wire got cut and we need to reconnect this shielded wire. I can splice the center conductor, but if I don't repair the shield, then you're going to have an area where EMI, electromagnetic interference, can come in and penetrate the center conductor. I need to re-protect it with the shield itself. So I'm going to strip this one back the same, the same way. I use this stripper, but I can also use the strippers out of my DMC kit. 
You simply hold it and rotate through till you feel it. You feel it puncture through the insulation. And now I'm good. I inspect it that I didn't damage the shield. I'm good. Then I measure half an inch, about right there. Flare it out. It's flared flat. I simply go around and trim it. I lay in, lay in this flat against the wire. Pulls off. And now there's strands, but I'm not going to trim it yet because it's going to get all crazy when I roll it over the top. I roll it over the top, comb it back over, and then give it a slight haircut. Cut those strands off, those long strands. All right. Strands are cut off. A little long. I think I went over a half inch. All right. So now I got these two wires. I need to connect the wires themselves, but I also the center conductors themselves. But I also need to connect the shield. So all I'm going to simply do first. I'm going to work on uh, what I need to do is slide over everything I'm going to need to make this repair. One, I need the main piece of heat shrink. So if this was a long cable, I would slide that on the cable, everything I need. Since it's not, I can come back in from the other ends so I can concentrate on this repair real quick. So I'm going to strip these two wires just like you would any other type of conductor. I'm going to strip them, and I'm stripping them for an environmental splice. Stripping them kind of long. Hmm. Let's strip the other side. Environmental splice. I'm going to check my depth. Way too long. Need to trim her up. So remember, it's got an environmental splice. It's got to go in, hit the window. I should be able to see it in the window and look at my fingernail. I have about a fingernail gap. That looks okay. I'm going to strip the other end. Look, I can see I'm already too long. Check it. Still too long. All right, it's going to be about right. Get this set ready. I'm using red 22 gauge wire here, so I can go from 20 gauge to 26. Slide this splice in. Just like we looked at with the environmental crimps, windows up and tubes in line. I'm going to get this guy. Before I do that, I can't, almost forgot, I've got to slide on my environmental splice. And the center splice. This gets kind of tough. You've got to find yourself room. Pull it in there, keeping the teeth straight up, the window straight up. Close her off, hold your wire, crimp. Now my center conductor's done. What I need to do now is shrink that up before I slide my shielding over the top. I'm gonna shrink this. I'm watching for the gel to start coming out the end. Slowly shrinking it. It's almost there. Start to ooze. And that's a winner.
Remember, I don't want my heating element to burn up, so I got to go to cold, set it to the side, let it cool, uh, cool, uh, cool off. And now I'm ready for my sleeve. Now you can buy sleeve readily made, or I can use the same wire. Because remember, I want the EMI shield to match the same electrical characteristics of this shield. It's cool. So what I can simply do is take another piece of wire and use that sleeving to roll over the top. So in this case, since I can do this, I don't have a real airplane, I'm going to just take this piece, snip it, and I'm going to steal this shielding. All I'm going to simply do is just go in the middle here, slowly rotate it, snap it, pull, pull, and just loosen her up. get the picture. This is what you got to do. I'm stealing this sleeve. Um, well, take it off. Now I might have to fold this back down. Slide this on. Throwing that on, twisting it so I make a good connection there. I need to flare this back over the top. Flare it back over. Trim if necessary. connect those. I mean they're electrically mechanically connected right now. But what I need to do is take my solder sleeve, slide it over and center that solder, the red band is solder with flux. Center it up over the top and uh, let, it, let it, do it do its thing. You want to make sure you don't have strands sticking out the back end and that that is centered. So that's centered. I'm going to turn on my heat gun. And now it's going to want to blow around here, so you got to be real careful in keeping that thing centered up. And it's going to be extremely hot. And I'm rotating it around so I can watch that thing begin to melt. I'm going to rotate this here and see if you can see it as much as possible. I'm watching it and I'm going to watch it. First thing that's going to happen is the plastic is going to melt and then you can watch the solder it's beginning to melt. And then I want it to flow. Rotate it around. Watch it flow. All right. And I'm going to inspect it. And I want to see good solder flow. I want to see strands just like you did with NASA soldering. And to make sure I have a good connection. That's a good connection. This end, same deal. Now keep in mind, if I were actually doing this on the airplane, everything would have been in play. I couldn't just simply add from the back end. I'm kind of, I got it made right now. I really got it made. Okay, same deal. Center up the band. Now it's going to want to move on me. I'm trying to do this so I can see it and so the camera can see it. It's kind of tough. And it's bobbling around, but once that plastic begins to shrink, I'm all right. Now watch that band, you just saw that band just start to shrink. I can still see the band though, and I don't want to see the band, I want to see strands. And I rotate it and I see strands, and it looks good. Remember, I gotta cool that thing off. Don't just turn it off, the element will burn out. Strands, looking good, looking good. So now I have a good center, my center conductor spliced. My shield 
is electrically connected. And now what I need to do is slide a piece of heat shrink over the top. And that piece of heat shrink will not only uh, hide the work, because you don't want to hide the work, you want to be able to inspect it. Um, but I want that heat shrink to cover and protect this entire surface. So my heat shrink in this case, it's already pre-cut and it's pre-cut too short. So what I need to do is cut a, cut a length that'll cover my entire splice. So my partner over here, she's running around trying to look for it. I need a piece that's going to be, it's going to cover about six inches. While well, I'm talking about that, six inches, six, six inch piece, I can also take two pieces and you can connect them. These things will melt together. However, in our case, we're going to want to cut a six inch piece. Yeah, let me see. That's, a, that's about just right. Now, the heat shrink, well, I'm talking about the heat shrink. Heat shrink, you can buy it 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1. That's the ratio of heat shrink. Your shrink, how much it's going to shrink when you apply heat. This may be a 2 to 1 and it won't work for me. Or it may be a 3 to 1 and it will work. I'm going to give it a shot and we're going to be a good experiment. And you can see how big the uh, uh, heat shrink is uh, next to this wire. Ideally, I would go down a size, uh, a size heat shrink, like maybe this gray. That looks about right. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hope for the best. I'm hoping he's three to one. I'm gonna slide him over the top, and I wanna get over the entire assembly here. You can see that I need to shrink at least three to one to make it. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go heat, heat this baby up. I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna start out the center, let it shrink, and then I'm gonna work my way out toward the ends. It's getting hot. Let's see how she does. There we go. She's shrinking pretty good. I'm shrinking so I can actually, I want to be able to see the indentation of the repair. Which I'm looking at. And I'm going to work my way out the ends. Of course, it's going to be extremely hot on the end. And I'm going to work my way back. All right, so the center, the center shrunk up pretty good. And this looks like this is actually a two to one. I don't know if it's gonna make it. No worries. You come back here. Now you don't want to keep shrinking it and shrinking it. You know, if it won't make it, it's, it, it's not. You're not gonna make it a four to one by keeping heat on it. I can see a little gap in there. Don't like that. So what I can simply do, um, if I, because uh, it's wider in the middle, I can take my two end pieces now. And I can slide this over the top and shrink those two ends. And it's very hot. You really have to wait for it to cool down before you do that. As soon as that heat shrink, the other heat shrink hits it, it's going um, to waste it. It's going to shrink right down. I'm going to take another piece. That looks about right. I'm going to trim just a little bit of an end right here. Throw it on. Still a little warm. And this looks like this here is a three to one. Give it a shrink. Shrink it in. It just caps it off. It gives me a nice environmental seal. And you can see what I did there. And I could have slid it up even further to give it a nice seal. That's one way you could do it because it's so wide in the middle with the solder splice repair. You would do this end, of course, then you would do this other end. And that's solder shield. Repair. 